Welcome to Issues in Japan. The topic this time is a Western Pacific Union for Japan in the midst of the U.S.-China confrontation. I would like to share with you the insights of Mr. Koichi Isabi. Mr. Koichi Isabi is the former 37th Director General for Eastern Area, Japan Ground Self-Defense Force and formerly a senior fellow at the Asia Center, Harvard University. The Quad Summit, the creation of AUKUS, and even the dispatch of European naval vessels to the Indo-Pacific appear to be signs of a stronger commitment to the region by states that value freedom and democracy. On the other hand, authoritarian states, led by China and Russia, are also accelerating their efforts to join forces, and it appears that the two groups of states, liberal democracies and authoritarian states, are competing with each other. The reality of regional cooperation, however, is quite complex, and it is more appropriate to view it as a gradual process of collaboration in which the national interests of each participating country are intertwined. Many frameworks for regional cooperation in the Indo-Pacific already exist, including the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, ASEAN, which was established in 1967, and the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation, APEC, which was established in 1989. One such regional cooperation initiative is the Western Pacific Union, WPU, which will be discussed in the last section. First of all, I would like to analyze what the Quad, which has been attracting much attention recently, is in the first place, how the Free and Open Indo-Pacific, FOIP, which can be called its philosophy, was born, and what the nature of the AUKUS, in which the United Kingdom, a country outside the region, has joined, is. Quad, Japan, US, Australia, India. The Quad is a framework for moderate cooperation among Japan, the United States, Australia, and India. Although a summit meeting has already been held, there is still no Quad Secretariat. The Quad was proposed by then Prime Minister Shinzo Abe in 2006, and high level consultations were initiated. However, Australian Prime Minister Kevin Rudd announced his non participation in 2008 and the talks were temporarily suspended. Later, in the mid-2010s, the trilateral vice-ministerial level talks between Japan, Australia, and India resumed, and the United States joined the talks, bringing the Quad back into existence. In October 2020, despite the COVID-19 pandemic, the US, Japan, Australia, and India held a face-to-face Quad foreign ministers meeting in Tokyo. The next two summits were held online in March this year, and in person in September. To begin with, the feelings of the four countries toward the Quad are truly each of the four being different from the other three. Japan sees the Quad as a complement to the Japan-US alliance, and Japan wants to include India, which is on the other side of China, and Australia, which is located to the south, in the alliance. The United States hopes that India's participation in the Quad, in addition to its Japanese and Australian allies, will give it an advantage in developing its own Indo-Pacific strategy. India is not a beneficiary of the U.S. security patronage that both Australia and Japan enjoy. Nevertheless, India is joining the Quad because it is hedging its bets against China's growing influence in the Indian Ocean and neighboring countries, as well as against tensions on the Sino-Indian border, while maintaining the principle of non-alignment. Thus, while all four countries are united in their vigilance against China, the Quad is built on a delicate balance. At the September summit, they reaffirmed their commitment to a free and open Indo-Pacific FOIP, and agreed to promote a rules-based order. Specifically, the joint statement called for addressing pandemics, climate change, and cyber, promoting safe and transparent 5G, and building a robust supply chain. In addition, joint principles on the use of technology were set forth. In this way, the concrete image of cooperation and collaboration among the Quad has gradually become clear. As for the future of the Quad, it is not currently looking to expand the number of participating countries. Rather, it is more likely that the four countries of the Quad will deepen their cooperation in more concrete ways in the areas of COVID-19 pandemics, climate change, cyber, and technological security. Japan is not only an advocate of the Quad, but is also geographically located to facilitate the gathering of the four countries. 
Japan is expected to take the lead in ensuring that the Quad continues to produce concrete results by, for example, attracting a secretariat to Japan. What is a free and open Indo-Pacific? The relationship between the Quad and the free and open Indo-Pacific, FOIP, can be seen as one where the Quad is a means to an end and FOIP is a goal or vision. The concept of FOIP, initially called strategy, originated in a speech called the intersection of two C's given by then Prime Minister Shinzo Abe to the Indian Parliament in August 2007. He said and emphasized, the Pacific and Indian Oceans are now one dynamic union, a sea of freedom and a sea of prosperity. An enlarged Asia that breaks through traditional geographical boundaries is taking clear shape. We both have the power and the responsibility to open it wide and to nurture it as an endless, transparent sea. At the time, the strategic concept of viewing the two oceans, the Pacific and Indian Oceans, as a single entity was a fresh idea that had never been advocated before. Nine years later, in August 2016, at the 6th Tokyo International Conference on African Development, TICAD 6, held in Nairobi, Kenya, Prime Minister Shinzo Abe made the first call for FOIP. It is the union of two free and open oceans and two continents that will give stability and prosperity to the world. Japan will take responsibility for nurturing and enriching the intersection of the Pacific and Indian Oceans, Asia and Africa, as a place where freedom, the rule of law, and a market economy are respected, free from force and intimidation. In November of the following year, in his speech at the APEC summit in Vietnam, then President Trump said, I am honored to share the vision of FOIP, and the US president followed the FOIP concept originated in Japan. After winning the presidential election, there was a period of time when candidate Biden did not use the expression FOIP, but since taking office, he has continued to use FOIP. FOIP is a diplomatic vision proposed by Japan itself, and it expresses the ideals that the Indo-Pacific should aspire to, not the idea of competing with China. FOIP is a universal concept that is strong and easy for countries in the region to agree with. Japan has the responsibility to nurture and realize this philosophy. The Birth of Akus While the countries of the Indo-Pacific region were searching for a regional framework based on their own national interests, AUKUS was formed to include countries outside the region. The forerunner of AUKUS is the new Atlantic Charter. In June of this year, prior to the G7 summit in the United Kingdom, President Biden and Prime Minister Johnson, the only leaders of the United States and the United Kingdom, met and proposed the new Atlantic Charter. As the word new implies, the 80-year-old Atlantic Charter was announced by President Roosevelt and Prime Minister Churchill four months before the outbreak of war between Japan and the United States when the Nazis were sweeping across the European continent. It was an eight-point statement of the post-war international order. The new Atlantic Charter, released in June, also contained eight points. It proposed defending democracy, respecting territorial integrity, and dealing with cyber and climate change. It avoids naming specific countries, but judging from the context, it is clear that it has China and Russia in mind. Three months later, AUKUS was established with the participation of Australia in addition to the United States and the United Kingdom. Some media reports focus on the fact that AUKUS is an agreement to build Australian nuclear-powered submarines with the cooperation of the United States and the United Kingdom, reversing a contract with France for conventional submarines, but in fact it is more than that. President Biden emphasized that the US, UK, and Australia have fought together for more than 100 years in World Wars I and II, the Korean War, and the War on Terrorism, and that the US, UK, and Australian militaries remain the most powerful and modern, and moreover, that the AUKUS will also strengthen the relationship in the cyber, AI, quantum technology, and undersea domains. Therefore, AUKUS is more of a military alliance. If the Quad is positioned as a framework to pursue cooperation between Japan, the United States, Australia, and India in a wide range of areas such as responding to the COVID-19 pandemic and climate change, cyber and technology cooperation, AUKUS is a framework focused on military security. By inviting the United Kingdom, 
a country outside the region, the AUKUS makes clear the strong will of the United States not to allow the rise of China in the Indo-Pacific region. In March this year, the UK announced its strategic direction after leaving the EU in its integration review. The AUKUS should be seen as an extension of that review. The Western Pacific Union Concept So, what is the Western Pacific Union, WPU? Iwo Jima Guam, Tinian and the Truck Islands Papua New Guinea Rabal the Coral Sea, and the Australian continent. The WPU is truly an initiative that seeks to achieve cooperation with these regions. And the current proponent of WPU is Shinichi Kitaka. One of the features of the WPU is that it does not include the US and China. This concept is based on the idea that the Western Pacific Union should be a loose confederation of nations based on the principle that it should not be the main battlefield of the great power competition between the US and China, and that it should be a confederation of nations that can say directly to the two great powers. The cornerstone of such a coalition would naturally be the Southeast Asia and the South China Sea, given their geographical characteristics. This is because the region is located in the middle of the same longitude range from Japan in the north to Australia in the south, as well as at the junction of the Pacific and Indian Oceans. From a military perspective, this region is also a strategic point of contention between the United States and China. Therefore, it is in Japan's national interest to ensure that military tensions are not heightened, that freedom of navigation is guaranteed, and that the region is a peaceful mooring for trade between east and west, north and south. In the future, regional cooperation in the Indo-Pacific will become even stronger. Japan is expected to play a leading role in the Quad and TPP based on FOIP principles, and as a leading nation in the WPU, along with ASEAN and Australia, Japan is in a good position to lead the discussion on its implementation.